Mr. Echidna's opinion about the witch versus the devil, the warlock of melancholy. Who is he, Hector? Have you guys ever felt bad for someone, but also been jealous of them at the same time? This week's episode reminded me one- Feels bad for Roswell? Because he got fucked up by Hector? But jealous because a kid nut, right? Once again, why I love watching anime. Bieko's prank made me laugh, Hector's attack left me shocked, Ryuzu's goodbye made me tear up, and finally Subaru's argument gave me hope. It mm -hmm. truly was a roller coaster of emotions, and guys, this episode- 10 out of 10! Blew me away. Oh, yeah. The episode's title Roswell also blew his nut. Is the beginning of the sanctuary and the beginning of the ending because they finally played it. If I got to choose the title though, I probably would have went with the melancholy of heck. Let's begin chronologically. Hey, I heard that this is like a pretty amazing anime, but isn't it like super sad? Of heck. Let's begin chronologically though, and guys, please remember to smash that like button harder than Roswell smashed Echidna. This opening scene took me and a lot of novel readers by surprise. Of yeah. all things, I did not expect a side story to be adapted, but I'm glad it was. They really just gave us a flashback inside a flashback. Inside a flashback. They did. <laughs> it's flashbackception. You're right. Flashback. Inside a flashback, inside a flashback, inside a flashback. A long time ago, the original Roswell used to be very sick. He had a unique talent for magic, but he couldn't properly disperse his mana. So periodically, he would experience excruciating pain. He basically got his period every few hours, and whenever- Yeah, yeah, I guess it's a period. I don't know. I, I, I just thought it was funny because it's the pipes are fucking backed up, and a kid nut is just basically just making him release, which is- Kind of erotic, for sure it is, but for sure, okay, Roswell's also on his period every month. Whenever it would happen, he'd isolate himself so it wouldn't annoy anyone. Back then, magic hadn't been popularized yet, so Roswell was treated like an outcast, and his extraordinary magical talent ended up being a curse. However, Echidna was able to see his potential. This yep, because she knew from the beginning, right? Like, she must have knew about the existence of Roswell through her book, if she has the Tomb of Wisdom. The scene was not in the novels, it was actually revealed in a shop exclusive side stories. Ha! Huh, look at the list of names! Roswell A. Mathers, because he's the first of the whole Roswell lineage, whenever he became just all Roswells. Biko, Echidna, and who is Louis Mayer? Oh, that's Rizu. So a lot of novel readers probably have no idea this even happened, but Echidna surprisingly kissed Roswell on the lips. Mm. I'm definitely expecting Sucking slash hoping to see some in the near future, but I wonder how would Rom react if she found out about it? Ram would probably be like amazing Roswell Sama. I don't, is Ram romantically engaged to Roswell? I thought she just has utmost loyalty because Ram got manipulated. Because like... My guess, again, is that Roswell just knew with his books that in order to slay the dragon, he needs a really powerful person. Ram with Horn, I think, is an incredibly fucking powerful person. Tape himself has confirmed that like, Ram is one of the strongest beings if she is in peak performance. So I think that Ram is just under just manipulation and would be perfectly fine and just be a cut queen and watch Roswell do this shit. That kiss was honestly so hot that for a second there, I totally forgot Roswell puked- The viscosity of the spit as they cut it off that string was- The animation went crazy. All over himself just two seconds earlier. <laughs> Fucking fruit fly. I guess Echidna wanted to drink someone else's- body fluids for once. And yes, if you think back to season 2 episode 3, Dona said people usually vomit in the presence of witches, so that's what happened to Roswell. He was suffering from his lack of mana dispersion, so by kissing him, Echidna dispersed his mana for him, relieving mm -hmm. him of his suffering. After that, she taught him how to disperse it on his own, and helped him realize his magic- This sounds like Echidna taught Roswell how to masturbate and release. <laughs> Just- Again, it, that's what I'm thinking the entire time I'm watching this. ...potential, subsequently raising him to become the kingdom's most powerful magician. This is probably- Yeah, because like, not only does he come from a prominent family, the Mathers family, he also had 
like probably one of the best teachers he could ever have for magic. And then he passed down himself 400 fucking years just continuously researching and practicing and better, being better at magic. Right? So, and then there's probably some selective breeding too happening. Because I still think that he took back shots from Regulus at one point and got like fucking superior genes there and got even more powerful or something. So like, yeah, it, Roswell being the strongest magician in Lunica, it makes sense. Probably the reason Roswell is so obsessed with Echidna. But despite that, he was only 16 when she kissed him. So the FBI sent Hector to arrest Echidna. And as they say, the yeah. rest is history. Except in this case, the rest was erased from history. Because after the events of this flashback, any historical records of Hector's existence have been completely removed, making him oh. one of the most mysterious characters in ReZero. Interesting. He was re removed from... Zoom and calls deliberately erased. Um, but... Who erases this shit? But who erases this shit? I know Pandora can kind of do shit like that. I know that, like, you know, the white whale and gluttony as well. But intentionally, Hector has been erased from history. In Re Zero. Hector. As we saw, he appeared to be an indestructible opponent who defeated Roswell with ease. I thought yep. the scene was really well done, but I would like to read a bit of the light novel to show you anime only's how much more graphic the source material was. Okay. I'm paraphrasing here, but Roswell was described as sinking into a sea of blood, enough Ooh. to convince anyone his torso had been pulped right at the center, his internal organs pushing up through his mouth. My point is... The, he Hector did say that, like, I've crushed your... Your, your, your body and like your organs as well. Why don't you just stay down? But it sounds like he really just went through the meat grinder. They built up Hector to be another indestructible enemy, just to leave us wondering how he died. Could Hector still be alive? I don't know. Is Hector still alive? Did Hector and Roswell become one person? How did Roswell survive this situation? No, we, we have no clue. All I know is that Roswell now has Hector's drip and his speech pattern. One could assume that Roswell saw how perfect and strong Hector was and was chasing after Echidna. And even though he was crushed by him, he basically respected that so much that he donned himself in the clothing and the speech pattern. The other one, some people even say like because Roswell has this grudge against Hector, he puts the fucking clothes and talks like him. To remind himself to never forget about that vengeance? I don't know if that really makes sense. What else is there? I want to believe that somehow Hector and Roswell became like one person. But probably not. I would like Hector still to be alive. It would be cool if we could see, you know, Witch of Vanity and, you know, the Warlock of Melancholy in the present Rezero timeline. Wondering how he died. Could Hector still be alive? I'll give you guys my theory in a bit, but let me know what you think first. And remember, if Hector is truly dead, then that means someone else got the Melancholy Witch Factor. Well, I thought that Melancholy turns into Sloth later, but maybe that's just in, like, Catholic Church lore, so... Yeah? I don't know. And the current position of Pride is empty, which implies that maybe before... It was occupied, but Pandora is still alive, meaning that, you know, you know, because like vanity turns into pride, melancholy turns into sloth, at least in like Bible church lore. So yeah, maybe it makes sense. So not only is Hector one of ReZero's most mysterious characters, but he's also the most relatable and probably the hottest male character in the series as well. Aside is from he? that, he also had a very strong authority because yes, he is the Witch of Melancholy. I guess witch isn't a gender neutral term, Warlock. so they had to give Hector a different title, but don't let it confuse you. He is just as much a witch as all the others. The only thing that makes him different is the giant dong swinging between his legs. Hector's authority appears to be a powerful force that can be used for both offense and defense. It could be an invisible force field similar mm -hmm. to the unseen hand, or he could just be a fucking healer, I guess. <laughs> From a first glance, Hector appears to be about as powerful as Regulus. He was able to block Al Goa, Roswell's most powerful magic spell, and he could damage his targets from afar with seemingly no effort. Sounds kind of familiar, but the one thing that sets him apart from Regulus is the giant dong swinging. I also didn't see Hector take any damage though. I've seen Regulus take damage, his neck gets fucking turned, his body gets thrown around, but he takes no damage. Hector. I saw nothing impact him. He just fucking punched that Algoa, right? So nothing tells me that he has like this 
crazy regenerative or defensive capabilities other than the fucking fist attack that he did. What's him apart from Regulus is the giant dong swinging between his legs. Is the fact that the heat from Roswell's fire spell actually made Hector physically sweat. The spell couldn't hurt him, of course, but his body at least acknowledged that it existed. Wow. Regulus, on the contrary, didn't even get dirt on his clothes, and his body was completely unaffected by everything, even when hit by a sneak attack. Yep. So Regulus's defensive ability appears to be a passive, while Hector's appears to be an active. Both abilities are extremely overpowered, though. I don't... <sighs> defensive capabilities and regen, it's two different things. Right? This is when Regulus was caught off guard by the invisible hand because he wasn't aware. But when he is aware of attacks coming, he can have this like force field like put up like fucking Gojo South to remove again. So like I don't think it's a fucking it's it's not a passive that's always on. You need to be intent with it, right? I understand what you know Echidna's trying to say right now, but at the same time, this is like an active manual thing that you're doing, but to Regulus, I also think he's actively, you know, putting on these, like, barriers and different things to defend himself. But when he does take damage, it seems like it is a permanent passive that's always on where he just recovers. Defensive ability appears to be a passive, while Hector's appears to be an active. Both abilities are extremely overpowered, though I would say Regulus would probably win the 1v1. Enough okay. about Regulus, though. I don't know why I'm even talking about him. Hector was the star of this episode, but he seemingly vanished from history after his appearance in the flashback. All we know is that Echidna survived, and Hector was never heard from again. What happened? Echidna survived, Hector was never seen again. But we now have Roswell that looks and talks like Hector. No one knows what could have happened. I would like to believe that he's still around. And I wonder if the erasure from history has Pandora or Gluttony involved, but... There could be like 30 separate theories off of this just one instance, huh? So how did Echidna win the fight? Don't know? Well, in terms of her magical ability, Echidna is as strong as Roswell. And in terms of her physical- But we never see Echidna fight. We've never seen our authority being shown, which is the most interesting thing. Physical ability, Echidna is as strong as Megumin after she uses explosion. So with physical damage out of the question, Echidna was an extremely powerful mage, though Hector appeared to be unaffected by magic entirely, meaning Echidna's only option would have been her authority of greed. And what could it be? Nobody knows! Of course, we don't know what Echidna's authority actually did, but we can speculate. Somehow, Echidna was able to transfer souls into the Ryuzu clones and give souls to artificial spirits as well. Mm. I'm going to assume that her authority of greed is what allowed her to move souls around like that. Moving souls around. Can you combine souls in one? Did Hector and Rosal become one? I'm trying to like think, I, I'm, I'm really fixated on like, you guys are fixated on Subawal. I'm fixated on, and on Hectwall. <laughs> and like moving souls around. Fucking, I don't know, Roswell's like fucking dying. I don't know how this shit works, but Echidna's fucking uh, authority of greed, it's implied that it, it has to do with soul transfers and manipulating souls and doing shit with it. So, I believe Echidna ripped out Hector's soul mm. and put it inside Roswell. That's what I'm talking about! That's what I'm talking about! And maybe the drip and the speech pattern is just a side effect, right? It's just, it's just a side effect of Hector residing within Roswell. It's free real estate. Notice how the original Roswell spoke normally and didn't mm -hmm. dress like a clown, but yep. Hector did. Hector dressed and spoke in the same manner the current Roswell does. Yep. And check out Roswell's eyes. Before Hector... Ah, that's Regulus's eye. No, that's not Hector's eye. That is not Hector's eye. It's Roswell. It's Roswell got back shots from Regulus. Attacked, they were both blue, but one of them mysteriously turned yellow after Hector disappeared. No, 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 no. I don't buy this shit. No, at this point, when if, if Hector's soul got implanted in Roswell, A made this at that time, Roswell was not heterochromatic. Nope, nope. But at a certain point, I don't know if it was B, C, D, E, G, you know, fucking alphabet until all the way to L. 
I believe that one of Regulus's wives was Roswell. This is, I'm gonna hold on to this theory forever. So I think the soul of Hector is trapped inside Roswell's yellow eye, which caused him to adopt Hector's personality as well as his manner of. No, there's no fucking yellow eye here. If he did, then I didn't say it. But no, no, it's Regulus's eye. Speaking. Oh yeah. Either that or his yellow eye is a clock that controls time. There was. Kurumi? Was a sculpture in memory snow that a lot Super of people Wall. said looked like Hector. Super Bowl, yeah, some people, I, I don't know where the fuck you guys are coming with this. I think you guys are fucking reaching out of your fucking minds right now. What, just because of the fucking eyes? Oh, it's his hair, it's, it's Super it's Super Bowl. No, I do not think so. But I don't know, that might be kind of a long shot. If there are two souls inside Roswell's body though, which one's in control? Is I don't know. Maybe they're, maybe, maybe Roswell, I, I, I don't think the clown makeup really denotes which one's in control either. Maybe there is a bit of that? When he- Cause like, I did try to make notice of whenever he has that elongated speech pattern. And most of the times it happens when he has his makeup on. And when he doesn't have his makeup on, he kind of drops that act. But there has been instances when he didn't have the makeup on and still had that speech pattern. But like, I don't know, maybe they're all just kind of mixed together after many generations of Roswell passing into the next, you know, you know the next Roswell generation. Or maybe <laughs> there's like a fucking schizo battle internally going on and once... I don't think Roswell's personality has been volatile though, right? If there were scenes where Roswell's acting completely different and this has been a pattern of behavior, then it could be like, oh shit, this could be Hector, this could be Roswell. But so far, he has been very consistent with it. So I'm just gonna assume that like, they just kind of become one at this point. Is Roswell still himself or did he become Hector? Or maybe the answer is... Both. If mm. both Hector and Roswell's souls combined together, yep. does that mean Rom has been having a threesome this entire time? <laughs> That's a very good question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. Spiritually, it's a threesome. Time. Even though Roswell clearly suffered a lot this episode, I felt a lot more sympathy for Yiko. Beatrice. Despite all the mean things she did to Ryuzu, deep down, Beatrice- Yeah, that was fucked up. That, that, that was actually fucked up. <laughs> Biku just sent Ryuzu into this infinite fucking plane of just like forever doors. And Ryuzu was like, I'm scared. And Biku was like, yeah, yeah, it wasn't that big of a deal, I suppose. And yeah, maybe it was a fucking war crime that I committed. Down, Beatrice considered her a dear friend. This moment was even more heartbreaking when you realize that after this, the rest of Biako's life is spent alone in a library, yep. gradually losing everyone she cared about. Yep. Imagine losing your best friend and then having to interact with a bunch of their clones that don't even know who you are because they lack the memories of the original. It's no wonder Beatrice doesn't want to return to the sanctuary. But anyway, we finally learn the- I hope that Biako and Ryuzu can have some sort of closure even though the original, you know, Ryuzu is not here anymore. I don't know, I, I would just love Ryuzu and the other at least, you know, like the Shima, Bilma and those ones to kind of like talk to Biak or something and get a little bit of closure. Return to the sanctuary. But anyway, we finally learn the true purpose of the sanctuary. As we know, Echidna wanted to research immortality, but- That's right, it was never about immortality. It was never about creating a safe space against racism for demi-humans and the like. It was to keep Hector out. This episode revealed that Hector wanted to prevent her from achieving that. So to keep herself safe from Hector, Echidna planned on erecting a protective barrier with Ryuzu serving as the core, but Hector showed up early before they were ready to activate it. Now Echidna told everyone that Hector would destroy them all if they didn't activate the barrier, so Ryuzu generously volunteers to go ahead and sacrifice herself to activate Again, too convenient. Oh no, there is a way to put the barrier up, but it's gonna take too long. Oh, but there's one solution, but uh... Oh no, Ryuzu might have to be sacrificed. Again, I, I think that everything that happened was according to Echidna's plan and everyone thinks that they're doing a good thing and they feel good. They want to sacrifice themselves. They want to do it for Echidna, but that's just peak manipulation at play. Activate it because Ryuzu was incredibly grateful to Echidna, so naturally she considered it an honor to protect the charitable witch whom she admired so very much. But for some reason, when Hector showed up, Echidna didn't panic and she wasn't afraid. No one knows what really happened, but it seems like Echidna dealt with Hector rather easily. How? Almost like she didn't even need the barrier at all. 
Echidna Bruh. is very intelligent, and according to the author, she has the highest IQ in the series. So if she knew she had a trump card that could stop Hector, why did Ryuzu have to sacrifice herself? All according to plan! Because it gives a reason for Ryuzu to be the core, right? Unless there's a greater meaning behind this, it's just all according to plan. In my opinion, Ryuzu's death was completely avoidable, but for some reason, Echidna allowed it to happen anyway. Mm -hmm. Regardless, there was definitely some deception occurring within that flash. I wonder if she wanted to teach Biako a lesson about life, but I don't know. Flashback, and I think the original Ryuzu was kind of fucked over by Echidna. In yep. fact, so was Beatrice. Echidna yep. gave Beatrice the gift of life only to shove her inside a library for 400 years. Yep, and Roswell kind of got fucked up too, right? Just act as my human meat shield. Even Roswell might have been fucked over by Echidna. Yes. To save herself from Hector, she stuck his soul inside Roswell's body, forcing Roswell to dress like a clown for the rest of his life. The point is, anyone who's ever interacted with Echidna has mysteriously gotten fucked over and some- Yeah, and if Greed Route, we would have also gotten fucked over. 100%. She is a witch at the end of the day. An evil witch. Don't be fooled by her semblance of normalcy amongst the other witches and her reasonability. Nah, man, she's just as bad as everyone else. Some way or form. So when Hector attempted to kill her this episode, was he really the villain? From how he was portrayed, it's obvious that we're supposed to hate him. You know what? Maybe Hector didn't do anything wrong. Holy shit. Huh, Hector wanted to prevent Echidna from manipulating and gaslighting so many people. <laughs> Hector wanted to put an end to Echidna's just a never-ending pursuit of knowledge at the cost of everyone else. And Hector is a person that doesn't want to get tired either. He doesn't even want to sweat, yet he walked all the way out here just to prevent Echidna. Damn, Hector truly is the hero of the show. But remember, in Season 1, we were supposed to hate Betelgeuse too. Right? Yeah, and we don't anymore, right? That's the beautiful thing about ReZero. You think that you know somebody. You don't. Good people that's been shown end up being bad. Bad people end up being shown end up or used to be being good, right? All we see is the current version of themselves, but we don't have any understanding of what happened or what led them there. And once you do, you're going to have second thoughts and that's good writing. Look at us now. Perhaps it's pop <laughs> Unseen feet? <laughs> the unseen feet, bro. Perhaps it's possible that Hector wasn't actually the bad guy this episode. Yeah. Echidna has already admitted to doing some very evil stuff, so maybe Hector was just trying to prevent her from continuing. It's a shame we might never find out, but I think the biggest takeaway is that the Witch of Greed is a lot more sus than we previously thought. Yes, the Witch of Greed is sus, and I still, I, I now believe that the Witch of Envy also, right? All this shit, Satala got manipulated, gaslit, blamed. It's Pandora's fault. That's what I'm going with. And maybe then you can go one step back and say, Pandora also. Pandora also is a victim, bro. You think that she's the final boss? No, man. There's going to be some bullshit reason for us to feel bad. That's like in Demon Slayer, though. That's a classic thing, right? Like, even a show like Demon Slayer, what happens? You're fighting these demons, and it's like, oh no, they're evil, they're killing the humans, we need to get rid of them. But as soon as you're about to beat them, what happens? Flashback. Flashback happens, it's a fucking sad story about why they became a demon, and you're like, oh my god, they did nothing wrong. There were a lot of great moments this episode, but the highlight for me was definitely Roswell's voice acting and okay. just the overall atmosphere during his argument with Subaru. Yeah, his voice acting is amazing and the anger that he showed, that was fucking livid. Compared to everything else that happened this episode, a lot of this conversation was arguably skippable, but because of how perfectly the music, direction, voiceover, and even the art complemented mm -hmm. one another, it ended up being the best part in my opinion. I love the two dichotomies we're seeing here, right? The juxtaposition of, like, the same ideals, like, two separate ideals for the same goal, right? Two sides of the same coin, Super Bowl, their faces literally overlaying on top of each other. While they do share similarities, the way they approach things are totally different. Subaru declaring him- And this pose was the coolest shit. Like, of all the poses that we've seen so far, 
Something about this pose was so fucking heroic triumphant. It was like the heat of the moment and the whole camera direction, the sound effects of him doing the pose, that shit popped off. Himself, Amelia's knight got me extremely hyped. And once again, it's just amazing to watch him show off his newly discovered confidence. He mm -hmm. really does feel like a completely different character. Yep. This entire conversation was absolutely- Hey, you can say post kiss buff for Amelia, but for Subaru as well. Now he, I think too, even though he gave the kiss, you know? Yeah, this is a new Subaru. Absolutely stunning though, and Dio's vocal performance was definitely- Yeah, probably. I am willing to say that this is the most goaded voice actor in anime. Maybe I'm crazy, but due to the sheer amount of shitty isekais that we see, and a lot of power fantasies, usually the villains in these shows are always him, right? I have a, such a fondness for him, and he's such a fucking peak voice actor on top of that. It, it, he's just so good! one of his best if not his best archer was awesome too i'm a big fan of his and i think he was a very good choice for hector the new ending was close to perfect it's exactly what i wanted it to be I like it a lot more than the opening so far and it's definitely the best ending of this anime season other than this one. Oh, kumo desuka was airing back then three years ago yo kumo desuka was airing with long with Re zero that's that's fucking hype i love this anime this episode was, of course, 10 out of 10. What could it be? Maybe 10 out of 10. Oh, how did I know? A 10 out of 10. If yep. you guys enjoyed the video, please give it a like to support my channel. Yes, sir. Please go give Mr. Echidna a like on the video. Here is the link. Where is it? Boom, 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 boom. Go there, and I will see you next time.